Hey everyone, Michelle here and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my June TBR video. I thought I would have this video filmed at the beginning of May and all I would need to do would be to edit and upload at the end of May. Then two readathons were announced slash I was reminded of them. Maddie announced the whatever a thon for the month of June and clear your shit 1.5 is back for June. I already had my June TBR planned by then. So this month's video will be split into three parts. I'll have my planned June TBR because I do have a theme slash helpers for that for this month. Then I'll have whatever a thorn and how some of these books will connect but any extras and then I'll have clear your shit a thorn. Luckily for me, majority of my books can be counted for clear your shit a thorn. And for whatever a thorn, literally for that read a thorn, it's just read what you want. So I can carry over all the books. I just might not hit all the prompts. Saying that, I'm going to stop blabbering and get on with the TBR because there's a lot this month. <laughs> so for the Clear Your Bookshelf reading challenge that I'm doing for the year, the prompt this month is a book with an animal on the cover. And for me, that book is The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I got this in the Illumicrate box for December, I want to say. And there's a raven on the front. Like every month, I will read you the blurb because, as we all know, I am rubbish at summing up blurbs. Only their sisterhood can save them. At first glance, the sisters of ultra-exclusive Kappa Rho Nu, the ravens, seem like typical sorority girls. Ambitious, beautiful and smart, they're the most powerful girls on West Westerly College's Savannah, Georgia campus. But the Ravens aren't just regular sorority girls, they're witches. Scarlet Winter has always known she's a witch and she's determined to be the sorority's president just like her mother and sister before her. But if a painful secret from her past ever comes to light, she could lose everything. Vivi Devereaux has no idea she's a witch and she's never lived in one place long enough to make a friend. So when she gets a coveted bid to pledge the ravens, she vows to do whatever it takes to be part of the magical sisterhood. The only thing standing in her way is Scarlet, who doesn't think Vivi is raven's material. But when a wicked power rises on campus, the girls will have to put their rivalry aside to save their fellow sisters. Someone has discovered the raven's secret, and that someone will do anything to see these witches burn. And for buzzword -a -thon, the word is a title in the cover, such as Mr, Mrs, King, Queen, or Princess. So I've gone for Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. I've had this book for a while. It's a trilogy I had my eye on and never really felt the urge to read the series before other series. So I picked this book up last year for my birthday, never got around to read it, got the buzzword a thorn list for the year and was like, ooh, ooh. The queen you were meant to be, the land you were meant to save, the throne you were meant to claim. Theodosia was six when her mother, the Fire Queen, was murdered before her eyes. Ten years later, Theo has learned to survive under the relentless abuse of the invading Kaiser and his court as a ridiculed Ash Princess. But when the Kaiser denies her last hope of rescue, Theo vows revenge. Forced to make impossible choices and unable to trust even those who are on her side, Theo will have to decide how far she's willing to go to save her people and how much of herself she's willing to sacrifice to become queen. 
this trilogy is actually on my list of series that I want to read and complete this year. So if I really enjoy Ash Princess, I will pick up the next two books afterwards. Please don't ask me what the, the names are, I have no idea. But the covers are very pretty. And it's a girl trying to get back her throne. I like Red Eswin, I like fantasy. And it's actually one of those trilogies that I'm thinking if I enjoy it, it's one of those I can hand down to my nieces when they get to the correct age. Now on to the rest of my TBR. So at the beginning of this video I said I had some helpers for my June TBR. In June I have two sisters birthdays and coincidentally both these sisters like to read and like to read the books that I read. So like my nieces and nephew I sent them a message and said listen can you help me with my TBR this month? Can you both pick four numbers between 1 and 63 and they're the books I'm going to read? And I did. One sister, I got all four books. The other sister, she picked books after 53. And I'm counting along my shelves, not these shelves, but this literature I was like, I was like 50, 51, 52, 53. I magically added on 10 books to my TBR shelves. I got them 10 books later in the month. So I sent her a quick message saying, really sorry, these last three numbers, like majority of the numbers you've sent me, um, please can you just pick some new numbers before 53? And she did. Um, so I've got eight books from them to read. Um, because I did think about sending them pictures of my books, but I thought they'd probably just pick thrillers that I have or mysteries, not like YA books. Which is why I went down the numbers route again. Um, and it's worked. I have a variety. Well, it's mainly fantasy, but it's still a variety of books. So let's get into them. The first book is Malice by Heather Walter. Once upon a time, there was a villain. This is one of the few books on here that I can actually tell you what it's about without reading the blurb. So let's go with it. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling from the viewpoint of the Wicked Fairy. The Wicked Fairy is in love with Aurora. Um, so yeah, she is a dark fairy. There is There has been a curse that... Basically this curse, instead of just cursing Aurora, cursed the line of princesses. Um, and Aurora basically falls in love with the Wicked Fairy and she's sick of kissing princes because they're in love um, and obviously the Wicked Fairy is like well I, I'm not true as kiss, I am wicked. It's sapphic, it's fantasy, I love Disney princesses, a Disney princess story from the viewpoint of the villain. I know Disney doesn't own the rights but everyone knows Sleeping Beauty as Disney Although one of my goals for next year is going to be read the Grimm stories because I know they're more gruesome and give me the gruesome. Um, so yes, book number three for this month. The next book is Queenie by Candice Carter Williams. This is a darkly comic and bitingly subversive take on life, love, race and family. And this, according to reviews I have seen, which is very few and far between, um, has a good mental health rep. Um, and yeah, that's literally all I know. Like I said, not a lot of people have read this book from what I've seen. Um, I know Ada, um, who I will link down below, she has read it. She actually gave me this copy. She didn't like it, but she knew I wanted to read it. So she was like, listen, I didn't like it. I'm getting rid of it. Do you want it? Who says no to free books? So thank you, Ada. I will let you know this month, of course, what I think of it. And the next book is The Stranger by Simon Conway. This is one book that I definitely think my sisters may want to read. It was convenient for everyone to send the terrorists to Syria. Back when Syria was friendly, no one expected him to survive interrogation. Yet he did, and now he's out of jail. 
embarrassing for the former foreign secretary who approved his rendition, and the head of MI6 who knew he wasn't a terrorist at all but an innocent bystander. So Agent Jude Le Leon gets a new job, close down this embarrassment fast. But looking bad is only the beginning. Someone is using the former prisoner to front an unspeakable new terror campaign. Someone not even ISIS can control. He is like a rumour, a myth, a whisper on the desert wind. But he is real and he is coming. He is a genius known only as The Stranger. So this, I think, is one of the few books this month that I will read in between fantasy books to break it up. The next book is Play Nice by J.P. Delaney, another book that I definitely know my sisters will want to read. Um, I have read Believe Me by J.P. Delaney, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's up there. I have. It's up there. Great. It's that one. Um, and I have wanted to read more from JP, but I wanted hardback, but then I got too lazy of waiting, so I got paperback. Um, this book is two couples who find out that their babies were swapped at birth in the hospital, and they've both raised the, the other's babies for two years, and... Um, the couples are like, oh, we're going to sue the hospital. But while they're doing that, they find out secrets. And it turns out that both couples may have things they want to keep secret from the other. The next book is A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy. This is a YA fantasy where you have two princesses who need to fight each other with their magic to see who will take the throne. I was right, but I was wrong as well. So I will read you the blurb. This is why I read blurbs. 16-year-old Eva is a princess, born with the magic of blood and marrow, a dark and terrible magic that hasn't been seen for generations. Its last known practitioner was Queen Irena, who used her power to massacre thousands, including her own sister, thus beginning the rival heir tradition. Living in Raina's long and dark shadow, Eva must now face her older sister, Isa, on her 17th name day, in a battle to the death if she hopes to ascend to the ivory throne. Because in the Queendom of Mia, only the strongest, most ruthless ruler survives. Eva doesn't understand her own power, let alone how to fight, ha know how to use it. But when an assassin makes an attempt on her life and the fight with her sister looms ever closer, Eva finally turns to a powerful fair instructor and a mysterious and handsome prince for helping growing her magic into something to fear. Because despite the love she still has for her sister, Eva will have to choose Isa's life or her own. The next book is The Last Girl by Golda Madolsky and this is a book I'm going to buddy read with Ada. So again, I will leave her link down below so you can go follow her on Instagram. When it comes to horror movies, three rules are clear. Avoid abandoned buildings, warehouses and cabins. Stay together, don't split up. If there's a murderer on the loose, do not make out with anyone. New girl Rachel Chavez turns to horror movies for comfort, preferring them to the rich kids of her fancy New York high school. But then Rachel is recruited by the Mary Shelley Club and its terrifying fear tests. Elaborate pranks inspired by urban legends and horror movies. What starts out as fun seems turns deadly as Rachel's past catches up with her. And this is one game that she can't afford to lose. And um, we haven't decided a date yet, but Ada knew this as a Mary Shelley club. She didn't realise it had a different name in the UK until I was like, oh, here's some books I got. And she was like, wait, that's a book that I wanted. And then... She I, because of whatever a thon, which I will explain later, I was like, I need a buddy read before I got on Discord. And she was like, I'll, I'll buddy read it with you if you want me to. And I was like, thank you, Ada. So thank you, Ada. Do, do you want to join whatever a thon with me? The next book is Witches Deeps in Gold by CNN Smart. Sorry, CNN Smart. This is about two girls in Ireland one who was the heir to the throne but her mother was 
um, overthrown by a self-crowned doyen and the other is a daughter of that self-crowned doyen and they have to work together to get rid of the doyen. Yes, I am correct. Um, I would go into more detail about this but I do think Witch is Duke and Gold is one of those books that has been hyped everywhere and a lot of people if they want to know what it's about will know what it's about. I'll be honest I got this because shiny cover um, and then I read the blurb and I was like the last blurb, the last bit of the blurbs are best so I will read you that. Sworn enemies the two witches enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds. But revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except the lengths Iraya and Jasmine will go to win this game. <sighs> now maybe this is me just reading too much into things. I'm thinking this will be a enemies to friendship but part of me yearns for an enemies to lovers and if it does go that way And the last book my sisters picked was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. You follow six friends who go hunting and one of them is killed. That is literally the blurb. Pause to read if you want. Um, it, The blurb is a bit like her other book, The Guest List, which I read last year. Was it last year? Yes, last year. Wow. Um, I have it on there actually, um, and it, that was literally just friends go to a remote Irish island for a wedding, someone's murdered. It was just like, okay, I really enjoyed that book, I give it four and a half stars. Now a lot of people do say The Hunting Party isn't as good as The Guest List, but I still want to read this one, so I am hoping I will enjoy it. But I do know a lot of the... It looks thick, but I do know quite a bit of this is the guest list. Well, not quite a bit of it. Some of it is the guest list. Yeah, so the actual story itself goes to page 388 and there's 407 pages because you've got a page of the acknowledgements and then you've got the guest list. So really looking forward to reading this book. So now I've shown you the 10 books I want to read, now I go on to the readathons. Whatever a thon, the reason for this readathon is to read books. Read whatever you want, hence whatever a thon. Um, the goal is literally just to read however many books you've signed up with. So the sign up sheet, I was like, yep, here's my name, I want to read 10 books because I have 10 books. Um, you can earn points. There are names. Have I written down the names? I don't think I did write down the names. I, I wrote something down in my reading journal so I would remember. Um, here's a spread. So, yeah, whatever a thon, there are teams based on the genre of books you want to read. Well, the genre that you like. I'll leave the announcement video down below because it explains it a lot better than myself. However, my team is Dreams and Drama Queens and the main genre is fantasy. There are two team captains, Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction and Maddie at Book Browsing Blog, our incredible hosts. So you must be thinking, well if the team genre is fantasy Michelle, that's the only books you can read to earn points. But you don't just have fantasy this month. Well, you can earn points for reading your team genre. But it's only like 25 points. Um, the, the points really don't matter because they, well they do, but that's just the amount of books you read. To read your goal, to reach your goal, there are four points that you can hit to get to win. It'll make sense. But if you read a quarter of the books, that you put down you want to read so don't not names just literally numbers so for me it's 10 so it's like two and a half slash three i go from a mortal to a youngling if i read five books i go from a youngling to an acolyte five books to eight books um once i reach eight i go to a mage and when i read all 10 books i become a dieter 
like I said, there are points. Um, so if you become a youngling, you get 500 points extra. In Acolyte, 1,000 points. In Mage, 1,500. And a Dietary, 2,000 points. Before you reach Dietary, you get 100 points per book. Once you reach Dietary or your goal, you get 200 points per book. If your book has LGBTQ plus rep, so the book itself, the author, you get an extra 100 points. If it's a host fave, which is explained in the video, you get 50 points. Team genre, 25 points extra. If you hit one of the 15 prompts, you get 25 points. Obviously, some books may match more than one prompt. You can only claim points for up to three prompts. So, I do have a TBR for this. But it literally is just, that's not the only book I'm going to put for that prompt. It's literally, I just want you to know that I could get a book for that prompt. So this is when extra books come into play. The first prompt is a book that reminds you of a pride flag. So for me, I went with the bisexual pride flag. And for that, I am reading in the Ravenous Dark. You can just about to see we have purple, we have blue, we have pink. As a proud bisexual woman, I thought this would be great for me to read. And you get the bi rep straight away. In Thinopolis, magic is rare and closely controlled. Those blessed or cursed with power are put under constant guard, assigned to undead spirits who watch their every move. Ever since her father died to save her from this fate, Rovan has kept her magic a closely guarded secret until an accident exposed her powers for the world to see and her tenuous freedom comes crashing to an end. Brought to the royal palace against her will and thrust into a maelstorm of intrigue and deception, Rowan is drawn to two people she cannot fully trust. Lydia, a beguiling and rebellious princess struggling against her own destiny, and Ivrilos, the handsome powerful spirit she has been bound to who can control Rowan body and soul. Together, they uncover a terrible secret that could destroy everyone in Thinopolis, the living and dead. To save them, Rovan will have to start a rebellion in both the mortal world and the underworld and find a way to trust the princess and the undead spirit vying for her heart. If she doesn't, betray them first. Um, obviously, it's, another, it's a fantasy, so I will get points for that one as well, but the main reason I picked this book was represent a pride flag, bisexual flag. The second prompt is to reread a favourite and for that one, well, sorry, the second prompt is to reread a comfort read and for me I chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. The love story of Elizabeth Bennet and Fitzwilliam Darcy who misjudge then challenge and change each other. Apologies for the cut, um, I didn't realise I didn't have Maddie on mute for her sprints and she just started speaking, I was like, <laughs> um, so yes. I think the majority of people have read Pride and Prejudice. If you're my nieces, you probably haven't. Chances are you'll read it for secondary school, so Auntie Shelley has a copy you can borrow. But you might be thinking, Michelle, a comfort read, a classic. I adore the films, I adore the books, so for me it was a no-brainer. I am part of a buddy read for this on Discord, and we're going to read it for the end of the month, so I know I don't have to worry about that for a while just yet. Prompt three is to read a five star prediction. I'm not holding the book up because it's in there. For me, the main one is Malice because as soon as I read that blurb, I was like, oh my God, give me it. Give me the book. Sorry, I'm gonna keep looking away because I can't remember all the prompts. Prompt four is to read a debut author. A debut author. Again, I have lots. For me, I have chosen A River of Royal Blood for my first one. I have the prompts written down, hence why you can read it. Prompt five is a book out of your comfort zone. And for me, that will be Saga Volume 1 by Brian Kane Vaughan and Fiona Staples. Two creatures opposite sides of a galactic fight, I believe. Fall in love, raise a baby, and both sides start chasing them. I don't read comics, so it's out of my comfort zone. Can you see the pile getting higher? Um... That 
read book is a last is the second to last book I have read this month for me. So can you tell how much more I'm going to read? Anyway, um, number six was a book hauled in the past year. All these books. The main book I'm going for is The Hunting Party. Prompt seven, indie or self-published. So for me, I did ask the whatever on Twitter for a little bit of help for a small indie published book. And for that one, I chose Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. A lyrical and dreamy reimagining of Dracula's Brides. It's a story of desire, obsession and emancipation. Saved from the brink of death by a mysterious stranger, Constant Constanta is transformed from a med medieval peasant into a bride fit for an undying king. But when Dracula draws a cunning aristocrat and a starving artist into his web of passion and deceit, Constanta realises that her beloved is capable of terrible things. Finding comfort in the arms of her rival consorts, she begins to unravel their husband's darkest secrets and it's basically Constanta will have to choose between her own freedom and her love for her husband. Sorry that I'm going through really quickly, I just want to get through all the prompts. Um, prompt 8, a book with POC rep. For me, I have chosen Queen It, but I do believe A River of Royal Blood and Witches Steeped in Gold could also be classed for that as well. Point 9 was Pull. So on Twitter, I put up four books, four small fantasy books, I believe, that I wanted to read. And the book that I thought would win, did win, Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is, um, I'll read you the blurb because, yeah. On the fringes of the Great Spice Road, Maya Tamarin dreams of becoming the greatest tailor in the land. But as a girl, she the best she can hope for is to marry well. Then a royal messenger summons her ailing father to court and Maya sees her chance. Disguised as a man, she travels to the Summer Palace in her father's place to compete for the Emperor's favour and the coveted position of Imperial Tailor. If Maya's ruse is discovered, her life will be forfeit, but if she wins, she will achieve her greatest dream. Yet nothing could have prepared her for the challenge ahead, to sew three magic gowns for the Emperor's bride-to-be. One from the laughter of the sun, one from the tears of the moon and one from the blood of stars. Accompanied by the mysterious court enchanter, whose piercing eyes seem to be seen straight through her disguise, Maya's journey will take her to the far reaches of the kingdom, seeking the sun, the moon and the stars, and finding more than she ever could have imagined. This is a really popular book at the moment. The sequel comes out in July. I pre-ordered it already. Um, Fairy Loot did a special edition. I didn't buy it because it's £50 and even though it's really pretty I just like can't justify that for the book that I haven't read yet but I have a feeling because this is another five star prediction I have a feeling that I might regret that. Prompt 10 is to fit a TBR game prompt so book to fit that. I have lots from various different people some big bookstagrammers some little well some from big booktubers some from little booktubers so I haven't decided which prompt to go for yet so I'll let you know when I read it. <laughs> um, prompt 11, a buddy read. So for me, that will be The Last Girl. But I also have Saga and, and Pride and Prejudice as well. Prompt 12, disability or mental health rep. So for me, that will be Queen It due to everyone saying it has good mental health representation. And for someone who does struggle with anxiety, I did want a book that did deal with mental health rather than disability. Prompt 13, a bookish creator's favourites list. For me, I went with the one bookish creator I am supporting on Patreon, and that is Jade from J.D. Ray Reads. And one of her favourite authors is Sebastian de Castell. So I went with the first book in his YA series, Spellsinger. Um, magic is a con game. Kellen is moments away from facing his first major duel and the start of four trials that will make him a spellcaster. There's just one problem, his magic is gone. As his 16th birthday approaches, Kellen falls back on his cunning until a daring stranger challenges him to take a different path. Um, so yeah, Jade loves this series So and I, it's on her favourites list. I, it's one of her first favourites for this year, so it's on her favourites list. It's also a series that my best friend Matt loves, so I'm hoping if I like this, 
I can send you a message going, I like spell something and they can ring me, be really excited. So yeah. Two birds, one stone, all that jazz. We're nearly there for whatever's on, I promise. Um <laughs> for 14, cover features the team colour. As you may have guessed from the top of my pages, my team colour is green. So obviously, we kiss teeth in gold. But Malice has green in Heather's name and Heather's the author, so that's important. So I'm also going to class it for Malice as well if needed. So, prompt 15. The last letter in the title of the book you've just read has to match the, the first letter in the title of the book you're next going to read. So for me, that means I need to read Ash Princess, so it's an S, and the next book I have to read after that will be The Stranger by Simon Conway because you take out the, because there's so many books starting with the, that just would make it harder for everyone. Um, so that at the moment is my whatever -a -thon TBR. Um, like I said, I don't think I've really explained it that well, so I will link Maddie's um, announcement video down below, explains everything. Come join, even if you're watching this middle of June and you ha you think I'm too late to join, it sounds great. You can join right up until the 29th of June. Come join Dreams and Drama Queens, we're amazing. <laughs> and the final readathon for this month is Clear Your Shit. If you weren't following my channel, this is a readathon that started last November. It lasted two months, there were 18 prompts, I failed miserably. Last month, November and December for me weren't great for the books I picked. Um, this time it's back for around 1.5. There are nine prompts. I was really lucky at reading the prompts. I realised I could match eight, well, seven slash eight of the books, so that was good. Um, the aim for this readathon read all nine prompts to help the witch resurrect you. <laughs> you may be thinking, what? I will link the Twitter down below because the Twitter is amazing. Um, Ignore the narrator, I annoyed him, so I'm on team Library Witch. Because <laughs> libraries are amazing. So there are nine prompts. So you have Candles, to read a book with black and white on the cover. This is the one book that I, this is the one prompt that I didn't think I could have picked from these quite Clearly enough for myself, so for me, I chose a new book, and that is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. Um, this was also on my poll pick, so I, I'm going to put that for that. It was actually number two, I think, on that list. Um, and um, it's a fantasy. You'll understand why it's a fantasy when I read you the blurb. Matty can't remember a time before she and William lived alone on a mountain together. She must never make him upset. But when Matty discovers the mutilated body of a fox in the woods, she realises that they're not alone after all. There's something in the woods that wasn't there before, something that makes strangers cry. Something that makes strange cries in the night, something with sharp teeth and claws. When three strangers appear on the mountain top looking for the creature in the woods, Matty knows their presence will anger William. Terrible things happen when William is angry. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it is a horror, but I think it's a fantasy horror because that's what it's tagged on on Goodreads and I'm going with Goodreads for this one. Prompt number two is Athen to read a genre you don't normally read. Saga. Prompt three for a cauldron, a book featuring a magical object. A river of royal blood. You have magic use of bone marrow and blood. Bone marrow isn't can be an object, so and a person is an object. Yeah, I went down the dark route. <laughs> um, prompt number four for a comfort read to get bells. Pride and Prejudice. Prompt five is free, so you can read whatever you want. You don't gain anything. So for me, I've just randomly chose in the Raven Stark. Point prompt prompt six to get an ancient grimoire, a book with four hundred pages or more. For me, that's either Witches Steeped in Gold or Malice. Prompt seven for a bank prompt seven for a bag of teeth, a creepy book. A diary of blood. Yes, that's shaking. <laughs> prompt eight for incense, a book in your favourite genre. For me, that would be a thriller. So that is either Playing Nice or The Stranger, but for this one I've gone for The Stranger. 
and for prompt number nine for a chalice a book with something elemental i've gone for near the bone because they are based on the mountain top and they are very flexible with clear your shit readathon so that's what i went with there they all are i watch me struggle to pick these up now There they all are. <laughs> yes, I'm going to drop them. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of books. That is actually 16, I believe. 17. There's 17 books on that TBR. I'm not, I'd love to read all 17, but I just know it's gonna be nigh on impossible. So my aim is to read about 12 or 13. Um, page wise, how many pages is that and how many do I need to read every day? Let's see. I'm going to count my pages on my iPad. Um, I have the 10. So for my planned 10, which is my priority, there are 4,319 pages. <laughs> um so altogether i have 6603 pages in all 17 books <laughs> do i want to know how much she is every day <sighs> to read all 17 books I need to read 220 pages per day, which actually it sounds a lot, but I found I tend to read a lot of pages during reading sprints. So I'm thinking, especially when it comes to my bigger books or books I'm struggling with, I'm going to put a reading sprint on. Um, I also want, um, I also have a week off this week, the first week of June. So yeah, during my week off, I'd love to get my 400 page plus books read. So that will be Witch is Steeped in Gold, Malice, Ash Princess, Playing Nice. Um, the Last Girl would be in, The Last Girl would be included, but I'm already reading that with Ada. We haven't decided yet. So Ada, if you're watching this, this is not a push for me for next week. We can read it any other week. It's fine. Um, and I think. And then in that I'll add Spellslinger as well, just because that's at 396, so nearly 400 pages. If I could get at least two or three of them books off my TBR next week, I'll be happy. But if not, 220 pages a day, doable. Especially on a weekend when some days I read 400, 400 500 pages on a Saturday and Sunday, so... And I mean on each day I have no life but with all that being said that's a TBR um if you did like this video please leave a like if you have read any of these books and I mean this sincerely please let me know what you think of them because if someone says to me do you know what I actually really enjoyed this book it will probably push that up my TBR because I'll want to read it quicker but on the other hand if you said to me I didn't really like enjoy it that much it will probably push it down Hence why Queenie, while well, it's one of my top, one of my ten I want, need to read, it's not in like the top five, it's like number nine at the moment. Um, If you are new to my channel, hi, my name's Michelle. I read a variety of genres. As you can tell, I'm not good at summing up blurbs or really giving you really great reviews, so for that I apologise. If you are looking for someone who will tell you why they didn't enjoy it, but or did enjoy it but not spoil it that's me if you're looking for someone who's really vague at times that's also me um if you are new please consider hitting the subscribe button if you are thinking i want to watch a couple more videos the best ones will probably be my vlogs because they're the ones i put up every week that's my video then until next time bye guys <laughs>